everybody, Mrs. Bodishan here. Today we're going to be learning how to predict our products. So just a quick review about single replacement. Um, we may have seen this before. So we have some blueberry pie plus apples, and I bet you can predict the outcome with a single replacement. It's going to be an apple pie plus blueberries. So we just swapped out our fruits, right? A fruit for a fruit. Well, we're going to be doing the same exact thing, except we're going to be doing a metal can swap out another metal and a non-metal can swap out another non-metal. Now I can say that in another way. I can say that a cation can swap out a cation and an anion can swap out an anion, okay? I'm saying it in that way because hydrogen is a non-metal, but it is actually a cation instead of an anion like the rest of the non-metals. So we treat hydrogen as a metal a lot of the times. So if you're looking at this single replacement, we have aluminum as our standalone element, and then we have hydrochloric acid, which is our compound, and aluminum is a metal. We need to swap it with another metal. However, we don't have one. We have two non-metals. In this case, hydrogen is acting like our metal. So we're gonna swap aluminum for hydrogen. And so our products become H plus AlCl because it's treating it just like a metal. But we're not done there. That's only step one. So step two, we need to remember a couple of things. First, do you all remember the seven diatomics? These are the ones that occur in nature as a pair. I listed them here. They make a seven on the periodic table and hydrogen is also there. Don't forget about it. And then we need to remember our oxidation numbers. So we have positive one, positive two, positive three, plus or minus four, negative three, negative two, negative one, and zero for our noble gases. Once we can remember these things, the rest is a cinch. Let's continue on. Here's back to our swapped equation. We predicted our products. Now we need to focus on the quantities of these because we don't know how many of what we have. So you look at your standalone element and think, is it a diatomic? If it is a diatomic, you need to go ahead and add that too because remember, they're gonna occur in nature together. They never occur alone. Hydrogen is a diatomic, so we're gonna add that too in just a second. But we also need to look at our compound, aluminum and chlorine. Well, when they come together, they need to have balanced charges. So we need to go and look at the oxidation numbers. So remember, there are two ways that you can balance charges. You can look at your ratios or you can do the swap and drop method. I'll show you swap and drop in a minute. Let's just check out the ratio really quick and see if you can remember it. So if you look at the periodic table, aluminum is positively three charged and chlorine is negative one which means that in order for it to balance out and equal zero, if they were all added together, I would need one aluminum for every three chlorine. And so our subscript the three would go on the chlorine and we would only need one aluminum, which is understood and we don't need to write that. All right, so moving on, going back, remember we need to write the two for diatomic and here are our balance charges that we just figured out. That's not the last step. Our last step is actually gonna be balancing this chemical equation, and that's the very last step you have to do. So I'm gonna go ahead and balance it for you. Uh, I'm not gonna go over balancing in this video, but I do have two videos on balancing chemical equations. I'll link them down below. You guys can check it out if you need a little bit of extra review, okay? So let's try another one. Take a look at this one, pause your video, and see if you can figure out what two we're gonna swap in order to get our products correct. All right, let's go ahead and check it out. Bromine is a non-metal, so we have to swap it with another non-metal. Iodine is a non-metal and potassium is a metal. So we're gonna be swapping it with iodine. So it's gonna end up looking something like this. KBr plus I. I is gonna be our lone element off to the side. So we need to first ask ourselves, is iodine a diatomic? And it is. So we need to go ahead and put the two for the I, for um, it representing a diatomic, and we need to balance our charges for potassium and bromine together. If you look up the oxidation numbers on the periodic table, potassium is positively one charged and bromine is negatively one charged, which means if we were to swap and drop, reminder what that is, we're gonna pull this one down and we're gonna pull this one down. So you swap them and you drop them down to subscripts it's just one in one. In other words, they're already balanced. We don't need to write a subscript because ones are understood. So I do not need to add subscripts here, but I do need to add the subscript of the two on my eye for it to be a diatomic. 
Now remember, we're not done quite yet. We need to balance it. So I went ahead and balanced it for you guys so you could check your work and make sure you got it correct. Okay, what happens if they throw in a polyatomic? You can see this one, we have PO4, which is our polyatomic. So it might look a little funky. We have more elements going on, but remember we treat polyatomics as if they're one element. So don't let this throw you off at all. Our standalone element is magnesium, which is a metal. We need to go ahead and swap that out with another metal. The other metal is aluminum. So once we make that swap, it's gonna look something like this. Now we need to ask ourselves: is our standalone aluminum a diatomic? It is not. So we are not gonna write the two there because it's not a diatomic, but we still need to balance charges. So if you look up the charges, magnesium is gonna be positive two and PO4 is gonna be negative three. If we swap and drop this three, we'll go down to the magnesium and the two will go down to the PO4. So it's gonna look something like this once it's all said and done. Notice that three is now on the magnesium and the two is outside of the parentheses on the PO4, okay? But we're not done, we need to balance. Once you balance and get it all said and done, it is um, just like this. And you can't see that, but that's AL2, you guys. Sorry, it ended up behind my face. Okay, so let's go ahead on to double displacement. So double displacement is different because now we have two compounds and we're swapping them. So how do you know which element goes with which element during the swap? Well, this is an easy way to remember it. You are gonna do inside pairs with inside, outside pairs with outside. Let me show you. You're gonna do your inside element pairs with your inside element and your outside element pairs with your outside element. This works every time. So once you get those paired, you're gonna balance your charges because we won't have a diatomic. None of them are off on their own anymore. They're making a compound. So I went ahead and I paired them and I put their um, oxidation numbers next to them. So we're gonna do swap and drop. So the three comes down and the one comes down and you can see what we have. And the two comes down and the three comes down and you can see what we have. This is Ca3N2. Sorry about that, you guys. My face is again in the way a little bit. So once we get that done, remember, that's not our last step. Our last step is to balance our chemical equation and we end up getting this as our result. So check your work, make sure you're getting it right, and let's talk about combustion reactions. So remember combustion reactions, you have to be able to identify, they are gonna be a hydrocarbon, which looks like this. C, some kind of number, H, and some kind of number. It could be ones, it could be any number, you guys. So just look for hydrocarbon, C and then H, okay? And it's always gonna be added to oxygen gas, so it's O2. What does it yield? It's gonna yield the exact same thing no matter what, every single time. You just have to memorize it. And that's gonna be H2O and CO2. That will always be the result, the answer or the product. Now, if you look at this quickly and you don't think, is it combustion? You're gonna mistake this for a single replacement and you're gonna to try to replace oxygen with one of these and you're gonna get highly confused. But if you do that, just remember, oh my gosh, this is combustion. It's H2O plus CO2, water plus carbon dioxide, okay? So if you do that, you get to skip all the steps into the very last step, and all you have to do is balance it. Once you balance it, you are done and good to go. Here's some pro tips, because combustion can be very tricky to balance. So you need to start with your carbon first. Always, always save your oxygen and hydrogen for last, you guys, because those are the ones that can get confusing, and they can kind of send you down the wrong pathway when you're balancing. If you start with carbon and you just can't figure it out at all, then do this. Erase it, start over, put a two coefficient in front of your hydrocarbon and start over. That usually helps. I hope this video is helpful, you guys. Thank you for tuning in. I'll see y'all next time. Bye, everybody.